read about the civil rights movement. We live the civil rights movement. night of, uh, of the election. They used to do a bonfire, and I assume that that stopped, you know, many years ago. But there was this bonfire, and the way that they announced the queen was that they would have the, the three uh, finalists to stand on the stage, and then they would call the name of the second runner-up, but they said second runner-up. So then I walked over to get the, you know, the little trophy and everything, and they said, no, not you. <laughs> and then, uh, so then they said, you know, first runner up. So then I walked over to get, you know, because, you know, to get the trophy. And they said, no, not you. And then I realized, and so this picture, which my mom proudly has up in her house, in the paper with me with my hand over my mouth going, ah, you know, but it was completely different. I mean, there was just no thought, no idea that that would happen. But um, one of the things that the, I think the campus did was the fact that um, they, they were making statements, certainly, and it's a great honor. But it was also an opportunity to say, you know, we're different and, and we want to select some, someone that they wanted to vote for and it was, was not thinking in terms of whether or not the person was, was white or brown or black. You know, I really think that, that that's one of the things that came forth. And we, through that time period, you know, those kind of things happened a lot. Um, so when you think about when they started talking about this program, as we were talking uh, to each other, just about everything that happened in the late 60s, early 70s, mid 70s, we were pretty much the first, you know, because it was that time period, and there were a lot of times where you were the first in terms of what, what you did. I was elected as a, a cheerleader, as a campus wide election. Um, and I, I, I think I may be speaking for most of us out there, but no, we didn't think we were doing anything special. We were just trying to find something we could fit in, something we enjoy doing. And I remember somebody saying, well, why don't you try the cheerleader? So I said, okay. Uh, it was a campus-wide election. Uh, needless to say, there was a lot of controversy during the election, and I won. And uh, some friends and I, uh, me and some friends went out and we were celebrating. And when I got back to the room, my roommate was there, and I could tell something wasn't quite right. And he tried to kind of play it off. Uh, and then the phone rang, and I went to pick it up and said, no, let me get it. He tried to get to it, but I got to it first. And there was a phone call, and they were asking for me, and they were using certain terms, and it kind of took me by surprise. I wasn't expecting it. Maybe I should have. But he thought he was kind of shielding me. Well, the calls came in all night, and uh, that was kind of tough. And it, it made you realize, or made you think, well, this is something I really wanted to do, you know, because you weren't really expecting that. So I guess to answer your question, sometimes you think you've really come a long way, and then you kind of have to take a couple steps back. Uh, the, the, the saving grace in all of that is that I realized that that was a minority set of people, and it didn't represent what TCU I was, or what you see wanted to be, or what the people who were here wanted to be. So I think it's important when you encounter those kind of things, you've got to put it in the right perspective. I was a mathematics major, and uh, the chairperson of the department in my sophomore year asked me uh, what was I doing for my work study, and I told him I was punching meal cards. I know you've never heard of that because now you have those electronic cards, but. You had to be real fast in counting because they had uh, numbers on the middle card. But I told him I was doing that, and he said, well, how would you like to work as a math tutor? And I'm looking at him like, tutor the rest of these people around here? I don't think they will accept me. And I told him that, and he said, oh, he said, you'll be fine. He said, I, you've been in my class, and you work with the students, and I think you'll be fine. So I went out of that going, man, I did not give up my day job because <laughs> <laughs> I just don't know about being accepted by the school body. So the first week that I was to go in there, he had set up the hours where I tutored some hours, and then I worked in the math office the other hours. And the first day that I went in there, they had the room set up over in um, the building that used to be behind the student center. 
this is still there, but anyway, there was a classroom, and they had a little sign that said, Math Tutor. Students came into the room, now you would think college students could read, but they're going, where's the Math Tutor? <laughs> and I'm going, I am the Math Tutor. And they're going, you know some math? And I'm going, well, why don't we sit down and see if I can help you out. And I started tutoring students that day, and then the next day some other students showed up, and after that I never had another problem with it. It was just that first initial time of having people accept that new idea, because at that time white students were not really used to having African Americans tell them anything. So that, that was an experience for me, and I guess if I had been discouraged and backed out, I never would have lasted the two years that I stayed in there. The great thing about race relations is the fact that you have a chance to make new relationships and meet people, get to know people, because we all have stereotypes, we all have opinions, but I have always been exposed to some form of integration at a very young age, and so I have felt that once you get to know an individual, once you meet an individual, once you get past the color barrier, uh, there are lasting relationships to be made. There's always going to be that part of culture that's not going to be at least open-minded about joining and accepting. But I think your experiences are going to be unique, and you have to take each one at face value, and you have to cherish the ones that are precious to you, and, and you have to enjoy uh, life as it is presented to you. I remember from 1965 through 1969 when I was here, that I have some lasting relationships with a number of cultures, and I, re I still continue to, uh, to make and enjoy those situations and new ones every day. So I think it's important that you, you just keep your mind open and enjoy what is presented and uh, make the best of it. We as young people right now um, are reading, reading about the history of that, but we have an opportunity to also make our own history, you know? And so I think that's exciting. And so um, when I was going to school, um, we felt that there was a need, just a couple of my friends, that there was a need for NAACP on campus. And so we got together with some um, local faculty and also some students, and uh, we just started a conversation about it. And then it developed into, um, the TCU chapter. I just think in conversation, like we just talk about getting people motivated, getting people excited about coming to events like this, is painting that picture and saying, this is your time. Like you only get four years to um, to be to to make an impact on TCU's campus. And once those four years are gone, they're gone. And so every opportunity you get to soak in culture of any kind, um, not just African American culture, but of any kind, I think you should take that opportunity. So.